Evaluate the triple integral over the solid region B of g of x comma y comma z dv, where the solid region B is defined such that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to nine, x is greater than or equal to zero, y is greater than or equal to zero, and z is on the closed interval from zero to one. And we're also given g of x comma y comma z equals z. The solid region B is shown below. Because we have part of a cylinder, we'll evaluate the triple integral using cylindrical coordinates. It's also helpful to determine the xy trace to help determine the limits of integration. The xy trace is shown here on the right. This is determined using the equations x squared plus y squared less than or equal to nine, x greater than or equal to zero, and y greater than or equal to zero. Let's call this region R in the xy plane. We have one fourth of a circle in the first quadrant. Because the solid is part of a cylinder, or because the xy trace is part of a circle, we will use cylindrical coordinates to evaluate the triple integral. Look in the notes below. The triple integral over the solid region V of f of x comma y comma z dv in cylindrical coordinates is equal to the triple integral shown here on the right. Notice we need to write the function f of x comma y comma z as a function of r, theta, and z, and dv is equal to r dz dr d theta or any other order of integration. Let's begin to set up the triple integral using cylindrical coordinates. First, g of x comma y comma z equals z, which we can also say is a function of r, theta, and z, which indicates there are no substitutions needed for g. And then again, dv is equal to r dz dr d theta, and we'll go ahead and keep the same order of integration. And now we'll determine the limits of integration, first with respect to z. Because we know z is on the closed interval from zero to one, the limits of integration for z are from zero to one. And now we'll use the xy trace to determine the limits of integration for r and theta. Because the radius of the circle is three, the limits of integration for r are from zero to three. And then theta is the angle from the positive x-axis. In our case, notice theta is equal to pi divided by two. Which indicates the limits of integration for theta are from zero to pi divided by two. And now we first integrate with respect to z, treating r as a constant. The integral of zr with respect to z is equal to z squared divided by two times r, or one half r z squared. And now we determine big F of one minus big F of zero by performing substitution for z. Notice when z is one, we have one half r, and when z is zero, we have zero. The integral function simplifies to one half r. And now we integrate with respect to r. The antiderivative of one half r squared with respect to r is one half times r squared divided by two, or one fourth r squared. And now we determine big F of three minus big F of zero by performing substitution for r. Notice when r is three, we have one fourth times nine or nine fourths, and when r is zero, we have zero. The integrand function simplifies to nine fourths. And now we integrate with respect to theta. The integral of nine fourths with respect to theta is nine fourths theta. And finally we determine big F of pi divided by two minus big F of zero, which gives us nine fourths times pi divided by two, and then minus nine fourths times zero. Simplifying we have nine eighths pi. I hope you found this helpful.